Hello all, in today's video we are going to start with the application layer. As you all know application layer provides different protocols to provide services to the users. These application programs are actually client server programs which can be divided into two categories. The programs that can be directly used by the user or the programs that support other application programs. So we are studying with the first application program at the application layer which is DNS, Domain Name System or Domain Name Server. In a nutshell, the basic purpose of DNS is to map the domain names with IP addresses. DNS is basically a distributed and hierarchical system that acts as an internet address book. See, whenever the users want to use uh, Websites, they use it through their domain names like www.google.com, www.facebook.com. They do not go with the IP address of it. But whereas the computers or servers at the, back, at the back end, behind the scenes, require the IP address for communication of the domain names. So we, we require an application program which will be mapping the domain names to IP address and IP address to domain names. So, our DNS system works like this. Take an example of a DNS server, which is a client server program, which is a supporting program used by other programs such as SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. It's an email uh, protocol where what happens is at the application layer, the mail transfer protocol is using the services of DNS client and this is DNS server. DNS client and server program where you would want to know the user wants to know the wants to send an email to this particular address and the SMTP client to do so requires the IP address of this domain name. So it invokes the DNS client and asks for a IP address for this domain name. So the domain name is given to the DNS server. The DNS server will look into a database or a table where it will find a particular IP address for a given domain name. This IP address is returned to the client, DNS client and the DNS client will give it to the program which requested for it. Now coming on to the namespace of domain name system. What do you mean by namespace? Namespace is the names assigned to machines must be unique because the addresses are unique. So the namespace can be organized where the namespace maps each address to a unique name. Each address is being mapped to a unique name. The namespace could be a flat namespace or it could be a hierarchical namespace. A flat namespace will not have a particular structure whereas a hierarchical namespace will have a tree-like structure. So the domain namespace which we are talking about is basically a hierarchical namespace where domain names are specified. These hierarchical structures are nothing but the inverted tree structures with the root at top and they can have as many as 0 to 127 levels of domain names in the tree. The domain name space is generally organized like this. We'll have the root server at the top and then we have the other domains in a hierarchy. Every domain, if you see, will have a label attached with it. So what is a label? Each node in the tree has a label, which is nothing but a string of maximum of 63 characters. Like you can see here, the label here is ARPA. Here the label is COM. Here the label is EDU. What is a domain name? A domain name is a, in each node in the tree, it has a domain name. A full domain name is a sequence of characters or sequence of labels separated by dots. Now you can see here, we have the domain names being written from bottom to top. You see here, with the, here you can understand that it is a hierarchical namespace. Secondly, you will have a nodes in the tree. And each node has a label and we will have a domain name. And a domain name is nothing but a sequence of labels 
written from bottom to top separated by dots so challenger dot atc dot fhda dot edu so this is the domain name at this particular node at this particular node if you start writing from here it will be atc dot fhda dot edu now the domain names are of two types we can write them as fully qualified domain names or partially qualified domain names if it is a fully qualified domain name it will be terminated by a null string that is a dot you can see here this is a fully qualified name where it is ending with a dot a partially qualified name is one which is not terminated by a null string you can see examples here an fqdn is nothing but a fully qualified domain name where the domain name is ending with a null string that is a dot that means it's a fully qualified name if it is not ending with a dot or a null string then you call it as a partially qualified domain name for example you are just saying you are just saying edu or you are just saying challenger so these are partially qualified domain names then what is a domain a domain in a hierarchical structure is a subtree of the domain name space so you will have so many uh, nodes in the domain name space where you each subtree is a domain in the domain name space tree now the dns in the internet has been divided into three different sections we have generic domains country domains and inverse domains let us know what each one means you can see that the in the hierarchical structure where the first top level is a root server in that the domains are of different types we have generic domains country domains and inverse domains these domains generic domains means domains like .com .edu .military .org .net all these are generic domains which are general .com for commercial .edu for educational .net for network services etc country domain uh, generic domains are a sequence of three characters whereas country domains are a sequence of two character which specifies the country .india in for .india .us for .us .us for usa then inverse domain is interesting that we have been telling that for ease of use or for convenience we will use the domain name instead of uh, ip address so we are mapping ip address to domain names in dns but we can also do the reverse you know the ip address but you don't know the domain name so if you want to do the reverse that you want to know the domain name of a particular website with ip address then you will make use of inverse domain these are some examples of generic domain labels .com means commercial organization .info means information service providers .net means network support centers .org means non profit organizations country domains you can see we can have different countries there are two level characters basically countries are two level characters inverse domain you can see a very good example for inverse domain i have the ip address 121.45.34.132 i need the domain name so the domain name is address.arpa now coming on to the distribution of domain name space the distribution of domain name space is done as a hierarchy of name servers at the top we have the root domain name server root dns server then we have another level called as top level domain name server called as the tld dns server then followed by we have authoritative dns servers so at the root we have nothing it it passes you on to the top level domain server where we have uh, labels like .com .net .edu .org are the domain names but when we come to the authoritative dns uh, servers you will have authoritative domains like wordpress wikipedia.org stanford.edu so this is the hierarchy of name servers now what we are going to see next is how is the dns operation actually takes place you basically have a client which is asking for a ip address for a domain name you know the domain name you don't know the ip address so you need to have a program called as the dns resolver 
the dns resolver is responsible for giving you or resolving the ip address for the domain name so basically the request from the client goes to the dns resolver this dns resolver will have a cache memory with it so it will look into the cache memory which it maintains that whether there is an entry for this do particular domain name if it is not there it will contact the top level name server what is the top level name server the root dns server the root dns server is contacted and the root dns server will ask to look into the next level that is the top level domain dns server and that will go to the particular authoritative server that will go to the particular authoritative server so this is the approach which we make use in resolving the ip address of a particular domain name what is the definition for resolution then that is what we have been telling that resolution is mapping a domain name to an address or an address to a domain name that is called as address resolution which is done by a dns resolver this type of resolution can be done in two ways either we can do it recursively or we can do it iteratively what do you mean by recursive dns the recursive dns is where the dns server communicates with several other dns to hunt down the ip address and return it to the client meaning the client will ask it to the dns server the dns server will recursively call other dns servers and then finally the ip address is given back to the client but in contrast the iterative resolution is where the client is directly haunting all the dns servers to get the lookup let us understand this with an example i have a very simple example diagrammatically showing you how is a resolution done iteratively and how is a resolution done recursively you see in the recursive uh, this thing a requesting host wants the ip address for a domain name so it will contact its local dns server what we as i told you it will look into its cache first if it is not there in the cache memory it will go with the dns server this dns server second step will contact the root dns server in the hierarchy i told you you have the root dns server then you have the top level dns server then you have the authoritative dns server so it will contact the root dns server the root dns server will recursively in turn call make a call to the top level domain dns server this will in turn number 4 will call the authoritative dns server which will maintain a particular ip address for the given domain name and then it will reply back with the ip address this ip address will go here sixth step seventh step to the local dns server and this resolver this dns server will give it back to the host which has asked for the ip address of the domain so this process is recursive resolution in iterative resolution what is being done is the client will directly communicate with each one of the dns server iteratively calls on each of the dns servers to obtain the ip address you can see the requesting host has put a request to the local dns server which in turn contacts the root dns server and this root dns server is not recursively calling tld it is again going back to the resolver giving it the address of tld dns server then the root dn uh, then what happens is the local dns server will again by fetching the address of the tld will go to the tld server the tld server will give it in turn returns the address of the authoritative dns server so the local resolver the dns server will again go to that particular authoritative dns server we are doing this iteratively see you find an iteration here where we are going like this and then we go to the authoritative dns server which will now give the ip address to the client so this is how we do 
mapping of domain name to IP address using the domain name server which is an application layer client server program which is used to support other application programs. Thank you.